Live Aid brought an estimated one and a half billion people together to help raise money for the people of Ethiopia affected by famine. It was one of the most iconic music moments in history, a turning point when it felt like pop could change the world. Bringing the greatest rock and pop stars to the stage and screen. And now a new musical is bringing the stories of those who were at Wembley Stadium in July 1985 to the stage. Featuring its creators Midge Ewer and Sir Bob Geldof and those unforgettable performers. This is my generation. John O'Farrell is the writer of Just For One Day. Where did the idea for this musical come from? I'd love to say it was mine, but it came from Jamie Wilson, uh, the producer. And I was immediately, why has nobody ever thought of that before? All the world's greatest music, a story with great stakes, a really interesting central character. The only people actually represented are people like Bob Geldof or Midge. Sir Bob Geldof was one of the key players responsible for staging the 16-hour global jukebox. Like no, the real one. The sense of something occurring was palpable on my way to Wembley. Every single house had it on the radio or the television and were setting up screens in their front garden, a glorious day, and I sort of freaked out and I needn't have bothered really because as we know, in today's money, $450 million, you know, from all over the world. But, you know, tonight these people will sing and talk about something that's beginning to happen again. And that's tragic. Actor Craig Ells felt a bit anxious about playing the main man himself. So I got the call from the director saying, would you come do this workshop? It's about Live Aid. You're playing Bob Geldof, he's going to be in the room. And I went, I'll just have a little think about it. Put the phone down, said to my wife, there's no way <laughs> I'm doing this. And she said, you pick up that phone, you tell him you're going to do it, this will be great. Bob, what, what was it like for you, seeing Craig kind of build this version of you? Well, I told him he was too fat for a start, <laughs> which... No joke. <laughs> which was a huge confidence boost early on, as you can imagine. <laughs> I've been dealing with the fallout from this for 40 years. But if you won't tell us what you did, what worked and what didn't, where are my generations supposed to go from here? I play Gemma, a young girl who is experiencing the story of Live Aid for the first time. She is the younger generation looking back on such an important event, but through the perspective of someone who's in 2024. I knew very little, so it's been a learning experience for me. I mean, getting to sing these rock star songs in front of an amazing audience is just such a thrill. More than 25 artists performed in front of 72,000 people at Wembley. Paul Young was one of them. I've never been in front of an audience that size, and, and we're talking the stadium, not the fact that when it then went worldwide. <laughs> you can never play to an audience any bigger than that. It's mind-blowing. What was the atmosphere like backstage? Everyone was very laid back and goofing around, but all all with a sense of purpose. The lasting impact of Live Aid can't be underestimated. It would lead the way for future large fundraising events. I just realised today is the best day in my life. Looking back, do you think that still holds true? I think anyone watching this, if they were asked the best day of their life, they'd be talking about the birth of their kids, the day they met her or him, and that holds true for me. Do I prefer that moment over Pixie or Peach or, or Fifi or Tiger or Paula or Jeanne? No, it's not a question of preference. It was a fantastic day, you know, and it was just for one day. looks brilliant, doesn't it? Yeah. You can catch Just For One Day at the Old Vic Theatre in London until the 30th of March. And now, talking of music,